Now you're talking about programmers versus everyone else here. And this is really geared towards those that would like to be programmers, but aren't there yet. You know, you open up the window and you don't code. Uh, or maybe you're not sure which window to open. There's a number of different causes for that. There's really two main causes. It's either going to be a, a lack of means or a lack of motive. You need both to get anything done. And those are what I'm going to be breaking down is what could be a lack of means, what could be a lack of motive. Uh, so that's, that's what we're going to get into. Let's start breaking those things down. The means. Um, if you don't really know your programming, uh, it's the information age. There's plenty of stuff you can learn. Set aside some time. Organize your studies. I recommend studying for, you know, probably 15 to 45 minutes. If you're starting to get that little headache, it's time to brush over your notes. Just know where you're at in your notes. That gives you an opportunity to kind of let your mind conclude what you're doing. You're not really going to be studying them. You're just brushing over them. Take a break and then come back. Study your notes then to make sure you're up to where you're at. And then continue on. I have some tutorials on, at least I will soon, I have some programming stuff already and soon we'll have, if I don't already, have a bunch of tutorials that will really, that can really teach you how to program. They're about an average, depends on which language you're learning, they're about an average of an hour in length each one. So you're just going to have to figure out your own schedule on which to do that. But it teaches the general gist of it. Once you've done that, then you can practice it. You have enough that you can start practicing with. You can start getting some ideas, which is where the motive thing comes on into play. Um, if you're watching this video and you're still watching me, you're probably not lazy. Uh, you're probably motivated to solve whatever this is and to want to program but you probably got a block there because you just don't really know what to do in order to build something you have to know what it, you want it to look like if you're going to write a computer program you have to know what you want that in program to work with then you know once you know the building blocks, once you know how to work with woodwork, then you can build that piece of furniture you were thinking about. But if you don't have a design and you don't have the skills to work with the woodwork, you're not going to make a, a piece of furniture. And the same thing with computer programming. You've got to, you've got to have something, you've got to have a project in mind that you can do and the tools to do that. So you've got to keep your studies in the back of your mind. Keep in mind, you know, how the programs work, what the structures are like. And look for things that fit with that, you know. What can, what can I write a class about? What can I write a program about? What would be a good function? You know, what would be a good use of a function that's out of the applied world that I can bring on in? The other thing, going back to means, I don't think I got on very well, was uh, fear. Fear can be another hold back. Uh, you're afraid to set your computer on fire. You're afraid to turn the lights out in your whole town. And if you have not been robbed the last 10 times you walked out of your door of your house as soon as you hit your porch, if you have successfully gone to work and come home safely, then you probably don't have such bad luck that you should be worried. I would say have confidence and don't worry about it. But if you are worried about it, well, let's take a look here. Uh, this is my don't worry and worry lists as far as for programming. For new programmers, 
and uh, if you're just writing basic programs you're just working with basic libraries you're not doing super advanced programming you're not writing bootloaders you're not writing a new operating system you're writing a program within your you know you're just writing another script you're writing another program you're trying to write something for a web page you know web is very safe web is super safe uh, if you're working with that stuff you've got a, so many safeguards that you don't even realize uh, and then on top of that if you're working in a user account you're not working in an administrative account you're not working on an on a machine that is controlling something like the power grid or some type of big crane or industrial equipment as long as you're working on a personal computer and you're working on a user account even if you can a restricted user account by chance you might consider that that gives you so many protections um, if you are working on that your operating system has huge safety nets there are there are people who we know of them as hackers and they like to sit in their basements and spend all day studying and have high-powered computers good connections and they're just trying to make the world burn and they don't do that very often and there's tons of those guys because there's so many safeguards out there with them and all of what they have and how little success they have I wouldn't worry about your little boo-boo if you're not trying to destroy the world with that new program that you're trying to write chances are you're not going to do it by accident they've been trying to intentionally do it for a long time some of those hackers have <laughs> and they're still not coming along there's a lot of safeguards in there and a lot of even more safeguards as I said on web scripting if you're dealing with a web page you want to learn with JavaScript any web page the browser has a layer of security before you even reach the computer but when we're dealing with that user account situation when you run a program as a user you are that program is running as that user it's acting as an extension of you it's just automating things that you could do so if you don't have permission to delete the kernel then your program does not have permission to delete the kernel which is the main operating system executable you know if you don't have permission to do that it doesn't if you don't have permission to delete someone else's files off that computer then neither does your program you've got those safeguards in place if you want to be even safer too you can maintain better control of your program by launching it from and running it in a terminal window and I will demonstrate that as soon as I'm done here but I have some other windows I have some other videos where I talk in more detail about uh, process management and I also talk about bugs too I have one where I talk about a bunch of bugs if it's not already out it soon will be uh, some of these guys are still in the edit queue and sometimes other ones don't require as much editing so they make it out before other ones so I never know which order they're actually going to be out in uh, alright so program what, what things are things to worry about a program that will not exit when you ask it to a minor concern uh, if it's running in that terminal window you close the terminal window you've killed you've closed your program uh, how about odd stuff happening we're talking about the hard drive light staying on other than what you should expect it to yes the hard drive might like the hard drive light might come on because of some back-end process that's running same thing with the network activity you could have a ton of network activity but it could be a back-end process but if it's every time you start your program could be doing something it's not supposed to do uh, now some of the worst things that will happen though is a loss of your session and what I mean is is all your unsaved work from all user accounts 
because if you have a really bad situation you might have to shut you might have to turn off that computer without even shutting it down without saving anything else or it might crash if you got a really really bad operating system and you've done a really big mistake in your code yeah it might crash the operating system worst case scenario uh, that means your operating system halts it didn't save anything and all your work's been lost worst case comes to worse and then I guess could also corrupt your could corrupt some of your files as well it is possible in the event of that uh, very rare I don't think I've ever had that happen um, I have had the loss of the session though um, and this other one I haven't really had happen either uh, what's here and the loss of files I wanted to mention but the uh, fans and heat I have not had that happen loss of files if you it can delete any file that is in the user account that you launched it from it is possible by error that you could do that but it requires it requires the file system libraries and you're gonna have to target it somehow but you could accidentally target those files I haven't had that happen to me uh, I've overwritten a file uh, but that was a file that was intended to be used by my program but if you are working with you know variables to load in your your file paths and all that these are things that very rarely happen okay and the fans are having up heat build up that means here it could be any program that could be doing it but it's more than likely not even a program now what I'm talking about by this is your fans are getting like it sounds like a jet engine they're revving up to full blast heat build up you're smelling the computer it's hot to the touch as in burn you hot to the touch you're smelling it there's smoke something like that it is normal to have normal heat hey when it's a cold day I love to turn the computer's fan right on me and blow that heat onto me it is warm that's expected but it should not be building up to a point of heat you should not really be feeling it burn you you should not be worried about touching your computer if that's the case I would stop your program if you're concerned about it, if you think it might be your program maybe it's doing something stressful to it then I would close your other biggest stressor programs if you've got some other high-end editor or high-end game that you're running some 3d graphical game that's stressing your computer shut that thing down if you shut down all your programs and you're still having this problem shut down your computer if you start to see smoke I would just unplug it I wouldn't even worry about shutting it down uh, I really haven't had to deal with that so much I know there are some programs that will rev up the fans and create a bit more heat but not to the point where it's really been a concerning factor but I just figured I'd mention it if you do get to that point where it's hot to the touch as in burn you smelling it smoking worry about it but once again if you are writing basic programs working with basic libraries you're doing beginner stuff you're not trying to make the world burn and you're working in a user account and especially if you're working in a terminal window have fun there's tons of fun to do don't worry about it all right let's take a look at uh, that terminal window thing on here so in a terminal window once I launch the terminal window I have this is the terminal emulator which is the window itself now inside that window is bash that's what's running as my shell right now I have bash running in here as my shell my shell will be running in there now once I launch a program this is the right way to do it okay I have it here because now now I have my program as a child process of bash which is a child process of this window that means if I hit this X my program cannot survive which means if it's doing something I don't want it to do if it won't exit then uh, oh well I will I will exit it with that it's going it's not going to be able to survive doing that also control C 
will usually work to exit as well. So you can exit out the whole terminal window or you can just hit control C, but if that doesn't work, you have the X on that window to do. So generally what I would do, if I, if I was working on this program that's an easy practice, I work with my program over here, my text editor, you know, code away, make all my changes, and then save it. And I oftentimes love to use keyboard shortcuts. That would be Control S. Now I could click over here or I could hit Alt Tab. Alt Tab to switch between Windows. It works on Linux or Windows. And then I can use the up key to, to use my old command. That goes up through my history to be able to use the up down arrow keys. Looks through my history of commands entered. And then enter. And then I'm running it again. I can see any changes I've made. So in that case I just pushed enter and it didn't see anything there. That was part of the, the command of the, you know, it just said, hey, if it's empty, it's gonna exit. Otherwise it will type up everything else. And continue to repeat until I gets an empty line or control C tells it to shut down. So yes, program have fun. Stop worrying about it. Thank you for watching.